Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles Tenantech. I'm Carlos Casanova and I'm here with my co-hosts Terry Brown and Kathleen Wilson. Hi. Welcome Hello. guys. And today we have as our guest Brandon Swafford from uh, Forcepoint. Welcome Brandon. Hi Carl. Good to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. So Brandon, Forcepoint is really taking a look at uh, some of the changing dynamics in our security profiles these days and how organizations really you know, need to work on securing their environment, their data, um, you know, their intellectual property. Um, you know, and we used to always work at it from a sort of castle mentality, you know, protect that perimeter, let every, you know, make sure that what's inside is secure, don't let anyone, you know, any of the bad guys in. But that's, that's obviously no longer the scenario. We can't operate in that, in that world anymore. It doesn't exist. So tell us a little bit about, you know, how, you know, how you're taking that on and, you know, some of the, um, dynamic nature that you guys are, are using to, uh, to really secure organizations' data and, um, and IP? Sure. Uh, great question, Carlos. So I think the, the way to describe it would be that there's a lot of talk about zero perimeter and no perimeter, and that, that isn't really necessarily the way it plays out. So the, the quick answer is that uh, when you start to include things like SaaS platforms, their Office 365 or Box and BYOD and, and pick an acronym essentially, but the way you would sort of handle that situation is, is less straightforward than it used to be. So the way Forcepoint is sort of attacking that is we're starting to understand how data moves around an enterprise. So how people interact with it, what they do with it, where it goes, whether they should see it or not. And then really the crux is, are they using the data and moving it from place to place in the way they should? So we attack that via controls on the endpoints, controls of the perimeters, but also behavioral analytics. So that the, the big problem with controls are that you have to build them perfectly or they start to impede business processes. So my goal is really to create controls that are flexible enough that allow people to do their job, but you know, aren't, so can, aren't, aren't so loose that they don't stop anything. And then I kind of fill that gap with, with further visibility and analytics. And I think this is where machine learning and you know, computer analytics are, are kind of a sticky subject primarily because they, they take a lot of work. So we, we try really hard to make them effective, but you know, the reality is, um, you still have to have humans behind the consoles. So we also focus on how to make efficiencies with analysis and automations, because seeing the data, trying to control the data is, is half the story. Kind of what you do with it after the fact is, is kind of the next big bridge to cross, which I think is where like systems automation and orchestration get really interesting. Um, so it's really a matter of trying to see all the various facets of where that data goes and how people use it as a means of better education, better control management, and, and really just overall business process management. So I know, I know that was a lot of a lot of talking. Does that make sense? So yeah, uh, Brandon. Yeah, that's that's really where we've come to, right? Is that you know that scenario that you described? You know, we can't operate you know in the um, in the old world anymore. It's it really has um, you know changed quite a bit in in the dynamics of of what's going on in 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 order to just survive in in this uh, in this new economy right now. Yeah, I think if you look at some of the most recent issues with like Equifax and Deloitte and I think the SEC, you know, a lot of those relied on, on really simple controls failing, um, poor IT hygiene, and, and really not, not a great level of management around accounts and people. And, and I think what's interesting about it is it sort of puts a fine point on the idea that if you're not paying attention to what accounts are doing, to what people are doing, in at least a straightforward way with regard to how the business is supposed to operate, not necessarily what they're doing on their computer with like browsing the web or things like that. I'm talking about like business specific situations, then, then you're going to find yourself in trouble. And, and it's clear that those controls are only really effective at the edges, but once you're in, you're sort of in. And I think that's really where the new horizon for us exists is that, you know, when you move from on-prem to the cloud or live in some sort of hybrid world, um, your options are limited as far as what you can see and what you can control. So the best you can really do is, is try to push that, visibility a bit further. So I, I guess what I'm hearing is, is, you know, we can have the best controls in the world, but you know, how organizations react or manage their data will differentiate them in, in, in the future. So, you know, what are some of the conversation starters that you have when you're talking about, you know, modern security? Uh, great question. So it, it comes down to a few basic tenants. One is, is basic hygiene. So do you know where your data is? Do you know how it, who owns it? Do you know who can access it and what systems are accessing it? Which sound like simple things, but as a company gets bigger and bigger, that becomes a much harder question to answer. Um, once you kind of have a rough idea where your stuff is, then the question is, is 
Um, is it classified? Does it make sense programmatically? Is there a way to know whether what good content that can leave the company is versus content that shouldn't leave the company? And, and again, you know, companies that tend to kind of engage in this conversation are ones that have been around for a while are maybe recognizing or have had re recognizing they might have issues or have had issues and they're sort of playing catch up. And, and unless you're the government, no one really has like personal data classification. No one really has a lot of these really great data controls. So I think the conversation always has to start with um, how well do you know your own company? How well can you break down those processes and, and how well do you know your data? Because without that, there's, there's not really a good place to start. So, so Brandon, is, is this still based on, is it more dynamic than just sort of a fixed role-based access for you know, what people can see, what people can access, and what people can send in and out of an organization? That's a, that's a great point. And I think IAM and privilege access management are, are, are probably the next generation for evolution with regard to that kind of role-based model. Um, I think it's going to be more moving towards attribute-based. And then those attributes now get embedded into the endpoint controls, get embedded into the CASB controls and the perimeter controls, so that it's more about who you are, kind of what your risk may be, how you're connecting and what you're connecting through that helps adjudicate whether you should see that data or not. I think role base is really hard to manage at scale, especially when that role is now moving between your organization, Azure, AWS, Microsoft, Salesforce, Box, you know, it, the list just keeps going. So now that, that, you know, identity just is everywhere. And so it's really hard to manage things with that identity layer. You have to do it a little bit more centrally to the data. So Brandon, I'm curious, you know, as you were talking about that, I'm thinking, do, I would envision that we have to start taking a time component into that equation, right? Because I may have certain credentials that are appropriate for my typical job. However, when I'm working out of the normal behavior, maybe weekend, night, that sort of thing, that may indicate that my credentials, maybe not even myself, but my credentials are being leveraged in the off hours to breach, to do nefarious types of things. Is that, is that kind of playing into that as well? Sure. So, so if we talk about analytics for a second and the idea that like identities and people have risk and that risk changes based on factors like time of day, like performance, perhaps like their other information they've been accessing, how they're accessing the system, are they VPN in, are they not, are they on their mobile device? You get the idea. So, so all of those things are important but all of those things sort of roll up into that human centric approach, which is we focus more on, on the person and, and who they are and what they've been doing as a means of helping identify whether, whether we should grant them access, whether we should deny them or whether we should sort of limit or change how they're accessing that information. Um, and, and I think that that stolen account is, is really the, the crux of how these big attacks tend to happen is, is they'll compromise an account and that's usually based on some kind of either lack security, somebody clicks the wrong link, you know, kind of that typical flow, and then they just make make hay with that account. But if but if that account is if we're monitoring it based on the way that human that usually touches it acts, and when they deviate, being able to take that automated reaction or at least light up the the board like a Christmas tree so people pay attention is what you got to do. So, you know, I, I guess so. Where do we go from here? You know, I mean, you guys are working on you know, different mechanisms and stuff, you know, but the data volumes are just immense, right? <laughs> um, how do, you know, how do we tackle that? You know, when you go into the, to an organization, how do you start? You know, because, you know, especially global organizations that have, you know, tens of thousands of people, how do you, how do you start with that? And, and, and frankly, Carlos, the majority of the, the uh, organizations we deal with are very large because they're the ones that tend to take those more diligent approaches. Um, so it comes down to three basic tenants, uh, visibility, controls, and then sort of analytics, and we sort of break it down from there. So I kind of look at it with respect to, if I'm a company, where are my crown jewels? What do I really care about? Have any sense of their own risk? Then start to identify the business processes, break them down into, can I see it? If I can see it, I might be able to control it. If I can control it fairly well, then, then I, I kind of limit that risk. But the problem is, is that sometimes that control can only go so far. So now I have to analyze the behavior so that I can either build a more dynamic control or better inform their controls as time goes on. So, so the best place to start with a big organization is start to really look at whether they have any control of that, of their resources and their IP, identify what that is and start doing that diligent homework of breaking those processes down. And I think in today's world, if you're talking about a global organization, the other, the other thing you really have to pay attention to are things like GDPR and EU privacy, which you have to consider at the very beginning of that conversation. 
where people get in trouble is when they think about it last. And they've built controls, they've built visibility, they've employed analytics, and haven't really stopped to consider whether it's compliant with the rules. And, and I think that's a, that's a conversation that is very new, so to speak, but it's also kind of old in respect to privacy. But I think there's much more potential bad outcomes with GDPR involved. So, so I have to say that if, if, if I'm putting this out into the world, make sure that at the very beginning of that conversation, regulations and compliance are, are literally on the front step. Well, Brandon, thank you very much. You did ask the question that I was going to ask next because I made a little note to myself about, you know, GDPR. That's top of mind um, in every organization. And I think even more so with all the recent uh, data breaches. Uh, funny, though, uh, a lot of organizations tout having the best tools. Uh, what's very interesting is that you take the human approach to security and, and leveraging the power of, you know, analytics and, um, you know, artificial intelligence to better monitor human behavior. Because, as I said, you can have the best fortress in the world, but if you can't manage how people interact with data or uh, access data within an organization, uh, no tool is going to help you. So I'd like to thank you very much uh, for coming to join and talk to us about a very timely subject. It couldn't be more timely. And uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks. Thank everyone. you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon.